try to learn a little bit about a lot of things. Because um, you might not know what you're really interested in. How would you know what you're really interested in if you at least aren't like doing it peripheral explore, exploration of broadly of of the knowledge landscape um, and, and t- you talk to people from different walks of life and different uh, industries and professions and skills and o- o- occupations like just try you know learn as much as possible constantly seek criticism yeah. uh, a a well a well thought out critique of whatever you're doing is as valuable as gold um, and you should seek that from everyone you can but particularly your friends people in high school maybe in college um, what advice would you give to them about um, if they want to try to do something big in this world they want to really have a big positive impact what advice would you give them about their career maybe about life in general Try to be useful. Um, you know, do things that are useful to your fellow human beings, to the world. It's very hard to be useful. Um, very hard. Um, you know, are, are you contributing more than you consume? And particularly if you're the CEO of the company, you actually have a distillation of all the worst problems in the company. So there's no point in spending your time on things that are going right. So you only spend on things on your time on things that are going wrong. And, and there are things that are going wrong that other people can't, can't take care of. So you have like the worst, you have a filter for the crappiest problem in the company. <laughs> the most pernicious and painful problem. So I wouldn't say it's, it's it, I think you have to feel quite compelled to do it. Thing about how you can become useful, as you mentioned, how you can have the most positive impact. But I, I encourage people to read a lot of books. Just read. Like I mean, basically try to ingest as much information as you can, uh, and try to also just develop a good general knowledge. It is definitely true that I mean maybe there are occasionally companies that get created where where there's not an extended period of extreme pain, um, but, but I'm not aware of you know very many instances, such instances, um, and um, so. But I, I do think that. Uh, the, the, you know, new great entrepreneurs are, are born every day, um, and we'll continue to see amazing companies get built. Um, so, um, yeah, but I, but I, I would uh, definitely advise people who are starting a company to expect a, a, a long period of quite high difficulty. Life is full of different risks, and I think that the, when you think about the things that you will regret when you're 80, they are almost always the things that you did not do. They are acts of omission. They're not, you're not, very rarely are you going to regret something that you did and it failed and didn't work or whatever. But the acts of omission, the thing, you know, and it's not, and again, I'm not just talking about business things. It's like, you know, uh, I loved that person and I never told them. And, you know, 50 years later, you're like, why didn't I tell her? You know, why didn't I go after it? So that's the kind of that's the kind of life regret that is very hard to uh, be happy about when you're telling yourself in a private moment that story of your life. Uh, so it- you should wake up worried, terrified every morning. But don't be worried about our competitors because they're never going to send us any money anyway. Let's be worried about our customers and stay heads down focused. And so I, you know. There, these are big, most of these are big markets. Another way to answer your, your question about com- competitors and Walmart is to say, look, they can succeed fabulously and it won't stop us from succeeding. What really matters is companies that don't continue to experiment, companies that don't embrace failure, they eventually get in a desperate position where they, the only thing they can do is make a kind of Hail Mary bet at the very end of their corporate existence. Whereas companies that are, you know, uh, making bets all along, even, you know, big bets, but not bet the company bets. I don't, I don't believe in bet the company bets. What are, say, three pieces of advice you would give to people who are looking to succeed in business? Well, I think by far the best investment you can make is in yourself. That, for example, communication skills, I thought was good. They're going to graduate schools and 
business and they, they're running all these complicated formulas and all that. If they just learn to communicate better, both in writing and in person, they increase their value at least 50%. You know, I mean, it, it, uh, you can't communicate somebody who says, you know, it's like winking at a girl in the dark. Nothing happens, you know, basically. And, and you have to be able to get get forth your ideas. And uh, and that's, that's relatively easy. I did it myself in the Dale Carnegie course. Some people wish I'd taken a shorter course now <laughs> in terms of my talking later on. But it, it, it's just hugely important. And you, if you invest in yourself, nobody can take it away from you. I mean, you, you and uh, the second thing, which I'm a certain criticism for not living it, but, but I do tell the, those students you know, that if I gave you a car, and it'd be the only car you get the rest of your life, you take care of it like you can't believe any scratch you fix that moment, you read the owner's manual, you keep a garage, you all those things. You get exactly one mind and one, and one body in this world. And, and you can't start taking care of it when you're 50. By that time, you'll have rushed it out if you have to live it. So, If you're making a good investment in a security, it shouldn't bother you if they close down the stock market for five years. All the ticker tells me is the price. And I can look at the price occasionally to see whether the price is outlandishly cheap or outlandishly high. But, but prices don't tell me anything about a business. Business, uh, business figures themselves tell me something about a business. But the price of a stock doesn't tell me anything about a business. I would rather value a stock or a business first and not even know the price. Someone once said the chains of habit are too, are too light to be felt until they're too heavy to be broken. And I see that all the time. I see people with habit patterns that are self-destructive uh, when they're 50 or 60, and they, they, they really can't change them. They're imprisoned by that. But you're not imprisoned by anything. So when you write down the qualities of that person that you'd like to buy 10% of, look at that list and ask yourself, is there anything on that list I couldn't do? And the answer is, there, aren't, there, there won't be. And when you look at the person you sell short, and you look at those qualities that you don't like, if you see any of those in yourself, you know, egotism, or whatever it may be, selfishness, you can get rid of that. But his, his, his is the right one for the world, ours is the right one for me. Uh, I, I look for businesses that where I think I can see what they're going to look like in 10 or 15 or 20 years. We don't own any, but if you take uh, uh, Wrigley's chewing gum, I, I don't think the internet's going to affect how people chew gum, you know. And, uh, uh. You need a genuine, a genuine desire day in, day out to delight the customer. I've never, I've never seen a business, and I've seen a lot of businesses, but I've never seen one that delights the customer that that doesn't succeed. I mean, what you want is that customer the next day when they think, do I want to rent a car or do I want to buy some furniture? What goes through their mind? You know, it's the place where they've had a great experience. When you start a business and you start to talk about somebody, you're, you're never in a vacuum with no competition, you know, unless you're just extremely lucky. And if there's going to be competition, that means somebody else knows your business as well as you do when you get started. And if you walk into a competitive environment and they still know more about the business than you do and more about your customers, you're going to lose. And, but most people don't consider that. They don't do the work. They don't learn more about their industry. They don't know even about their business. I mean, and so you've got to put in the effort to know more about your industry than anybody else. Um, and that's, that's the brains part and that's the effort part as well. Because look, if you're competing with me, you, you better know what you're doing, otherwise I'm going to kick your ass. You know, and you're not going to outwork me. And so, you know, the combination is usually what kills businesses early on. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.